everybody, Mike Naso here from Pod Weather and Internet Partnership Radio with the latest on the tropics and Tropical Storm Fay. You can see uh, 24 hours ago it was over Hispaniola, newly developed, and it's now left the island. And uh, the island has taken some toll. It's weakened just a little bit, but it's back out over water south of uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba chugging along to the west and it's expected to eventually curve up and strike florida sometime early to mid next week as a hurricane but there are a lot of uh, variables we're going to go over here's the latest on tropical storm Fay as of 5 p.m eastern Fay was centered at 19.3 north 75.2 west and maximum sustained winds were down a bit to 40 miles an hour uh, with gusts to 50 it's moving west at 15 16 miles an hour and that pressure 1,006 millibars and uh, actually uh, it's been as low as 1,005 has been fluctuating it's a weak tropical storm but you can see where it's centered and it survived moving over Hispaniola and it's out and the key is later tonight making landfall right around Cabo Cruz here on this little this little point here on uh, eastern Cuba and then kind of trailing along if you remember Hurricane Dennis three years ago Dennis kind of settled right along here as a Category 4 hurricane and intensified as it did that and uh, come ashore somewhere near uh, Sancti Spiritus uh, Cienfuegos right there on the southern end of Cuba impact Havana and then come on out early Monday Monday afternoon and then strengthen like mad over the Gulf of Mexico and make landfall as a uh, potent Category 1 hurricane somewhere on the Florida west coast now as of right now uh, the actual landfall point is north of uh, Charlotte Harbor and Punta Gorda generally towards Sarasota, but again, the cone could be as far north as scraping up the Florida east coast towards the Carolinas, or as far south as hitting the Isle of Youth, western Cuba, and coming out here towards the north Gulf Coast. A lot of uncertainty, but in that, the coast of Florida. And also keep in mind the time difference. If it heads to the right of this track, it could be striking Florida late Monday afternoon, Monday evening. If it heads on the left side of this track, it might not strike land until Wednesday evening. So there is an oblique angle here that makes all the difference with the timing of this system. Again, we have hurricane watches along the coast of Cuba, tropical storm warnings, watch for watches and warnings the next several uh, hours and days as we get up towards Florida, as uh, Fay definitely will mean business. Now there's the satellite loop, the visible, and the center again is, you can see it moved off the coastline of Cuba, of uh, Hispaniola, and it's centered right here. And it's trying to get its act together. The landmass did have some impact but it's going to move westerly and probably scrape along or make landfall here as I mentioned on Cabo Cruz. This should happen sometime later tonight, early tomorrow, overnight hours and then basically parallel the Cuban coast here. Now as long as I forget her name, Faye is over water it should have the opportunity to strengthen. You can see it here as the sun came up it began to look a little bit ragged but it's starting to get that act back together and even on the uh, infrared satellite imagery you can see it had that big blob and it's now moved back out over water and it's getting a little bit better organized now Faye is over water but it needs an inner core to be able to become a hurricane so what it needs to do is stay over water and if it strengthens and it starts bursting and it moves along Cuba and it bursts and bursts it could be a hurricane before it gets to Cuba which is why those watches hurricane watches are out if it doesn't if it stays ragged like it is if it you can see at the end there if this center stays kind of ragged and gets caught up over Cuba it may never even become a hurricane in the Gulf so that's why it could either become a hurricane if it starts to strengthen even as far uh, south of Cuba and then a stronger hurricane for Florida or it could just remain a weak storm and kind of ride up into Florida like Ernesto two years ago a lot of uncertainty with that which is why it needs to be watched but you can see the pattern should be good for strengthening until landfall so land is really the only inhibitor if it takes a track like that it's going to have plenty of time to strengthen before it gets to Cuba and then plenty of time to strengthen over the Gulf but again a lot of uncertainty there here's the model guidance spread and you can see the hurricane center track is pretty much in the middle of it the GFDL takes it all the way up here into Key Largo and then Miami and then takes it back off towards the Outer Banks you can see the Canadian model in here taking it to South Carolina after hitting near Naples uh, climatology says that it should uh, go into the Gulf but again we do have that ridge that should eventually move along and we'll get the tropical cyclone to push to the north and eventually uh, it'll get caught up and move northeast 
Uh, you have the UK Met in here, the BAMs, the No Gaps over here in the Panhandle, and the GFS down here near Fort Myers. And all of this means that somewhere in the middle is going to be probably uh, the Midwestern area of the Florida coastline, say middle uh, western coast, somewhere between Tampa and Fort Myers, right in that region. That That's a problem area for a place like Bradenton, uh, Sarasota, certainly. Uh, right now, if, if the track verified, the center of the hurricane would make landfall somewhere up in this region, but keep in mind, it could be impacting the Keys, it could be impacting Naples, it could be impacting the Big Bend region up here. A lot of uncertainty about where it will go and how strong it will be, but as long as that center stays over water, it will have the opportunity to strengthen. Uh, now don't think this is a situation like Hurricane Charlie. Remember Hurricane Charlie was a Category 3 hurricane when it hit Cuba, it weakened to a 2, and then quickly became a Category 4. This might not even be a hurricane over Cuba, and that's what we want to see. But you can see the upper level environment is dynamic for strengthening. It's going to carry this all the way to Florida. So it's a matter of if it forms a core, if those winds that are strongest get right around the center and it starts forming an eye wall and becomes a hurricane even, then that could just spin right up real fast over the Gulf. If it doesn't, it's going to be trying to do that as it's making landfall, which won't have as intense a system. Now further out, we did have our invest no longer do. It's moving up. It's not going to do anything. This wave looks pretty interesting in here, and we're going to watch as these waves move westward. It is August. Have to watch it. And for the final analysis of Faye, you can see here, note this convection down here in the southern Caribbean. You can see the flow over Faye is, is very favorable. So it's having a good ventilation. It's just stuck around land. You can see we have land here, we got land here, we got land here, we got land here. It's really stuck in the middle of the entire land masses. If it moves west like it is and stays south of Cuba long enough, we're going to have to deal with it big time. If it gets caught up over Cuba, we'll still have to deal with it, but probably not nearly as strong as it could be. Again, it's forecast right now to make landfall in Florida as a potent Category 1 hurricane. It could be much stronger if it strengthens and stays over water. It could be much weaker if it stays over land. That's why you have to stay tuned to IPR on that. Finally, Eastern Pacific, look at that weakening vortex. This is Tropical Depression I sell. Look at That's what a low-level center looks like without convection. That, that system is completely naked out there and weakening in the Eastern Pacific. Not going to have to deal with that. I'm Mike Naso from Pod Weather and IPR. Stay tuned because there will be special coverage on IPR365.com as Faye makes its way up towards Florida the next several days. I'll have more details on that in the coming days. Stay tuned.